Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again in today's video. An entitled Karen attacks a veteran on a boat and claims he is not disabled. She rips off his prosthetic and rages. Quick apology in advance, I am still sick so my voice might sound a little bit weird. And now let's get started. With the fun of summer basically at a close, I wanna tell you all a story that happened when it was still warm and sunny. A little bit about me first though, I promise it's important to the story a little bit later. I was in the Air Force for many years and honestly, I was the kind of guy that some people refer to as a lifer. Meaning that I loved my job and was going to do it for my entire life. That got cut short though when some things happened on the last tour which was meant to be simple evacuations. We got caught in some trouble and I got hurt badly. The medical system over there is not like going to a hospital here so they were not able to save my leg. I had to retire and learn how to use a prosthetic. I am a guy that does not do anything half-assed though and after many years of practice can walk on it seemingly perfectly. I wanted to do something really nice with my wife and we decided to go on a little boat tour. It's kind of like a cruise but it only lasts a day and it's mostly to see sights from the water instead of docking or being out on the ocean. It was really nice though and we got served a lunch and there is even a bar on the boat. Of course the good always has to come with the bad and that meant there was a woman that seemed to complain about every single thing. I have no idea what her name is, but based on her behavior, I'm going to call her Karen. I assume everybody here is familiar with knowing what that entails at this point. At the lunch portion she complained about the food and she was upset the boat could not randomly stop because some places of the water looked good and she wanted to go in and shop. I have no idea why she would even think that was possible. We did our best to ignore and avoid her because I wanted to have a good time. For almost the entire trip we did and did not let the things we heard Karen saying in the background bother us. It was not until we started talking to another couple about jobs and me talking about how I lost my leg in the air force that Karen seemed to come out of nowhere. Karen, oh please, you probably just want people to feel bad for you with that story. Me, excuse me? Karen, you heard what I said, I know what people in the military look like and they are not string beans like you. Well, not every person that serves is a huge marine like you see in the movies. Plus, it's been over a decade, so give me a break, lady. Wife, why don't you do everybody on this boat a favor and mind your own business for once? You have not shut your mouth yet and some of us are trying to have a nice day. Karen, oh yes, it must be so nice for you to benefit from your husband's lies. If he actually didn't have a leg, he wouldn't be able to walk like that. Everybody knows that if you have a fake leg, it means you limp. You could not even bother to do your research. I did not want to start a fight with Karen, especially since I knew she had been drinking. I was never going to see this woman again in my life anyway and we had about an hour before the ride was over. I just tried to ignore her and changed the subject to the guy I was talking to until she walked out of earshot. He was amazed at how crazy she seemed and my wife looked ready to pounce on her. My wife does not get upset by too many things, but people messing with me is one thing that she just cannot stand. She also surfed and knows how badly injured vets get treated. I pointed out something and we started looking at that and thought we were done with Karen. The guy was curious about my leg and I really don't mind, so I pulled up my pants to show him my prosthetic. If you don't know that they are doing amazing things with them and they sometimes look very realistic. Still, you can usually tell it's a fake leg just by seeing it. Once again Karen ran over and since this story is getting a little long, I'm just gonna summarize what she said. She said that she knew I did not have a prosthetic and admitted to thinking that all of them were just metal and basically looked like a robot leg. We were also sitting on chairs at this point which is important to note. We questioned what she thought it was since it clearly was not an actual leg. That was when she said the thing that was the dumbest thing I have ever heard somebody say about a fake limb. She said it was just a plastic molding that I put my real leg into to trick people into thinking I was disabled. I could not help but laugh at her so I was distracted while she went in to prove that she was right. She ripped off my leg and threw it right into the river. She had a smug grin and then looked to see that I did in fact not have a leg. I expected an apology but looking back though I don't know why I thought I would get one. 
Instead, she started blaming me somehow and it was my fault she ended up doing it, acting like I tricked her or something when I never lied to her. The captain saw the entire thing and I don't blame him for not knowing what to do. He made a comment before we left not to throw trash into the river, but he did not know how to handle somebody throwing an entire leg into the water. I was staying calm and just asked if he could radio to have police waiting when we docked in about 15 minutes later. When we docked, the police were waiting and before Karen could get off, they stopped her and made everybody stay until they found out what happened. She tried to deny saying that what she threw was a prop leg, but I had a ton of other witnesses. What she did was classified as destruction of property, since there was no way to get it back and even if it did, the chip inside would be destroyed. I of course was going to sue her to pay for a replacement and I could not wait to see her face when she knew how much my leg was going to be. It took a while to get the quote back from the insurance but since I had only gotten that leg a year ago, they were not going to cover for the same one. It was going to cost $5,000 out of pocket for it, Karen was speechless when she found that out and part of me hoped she did not have the money and might have gone to jail. A payment plan was worked out though and I was able to get the replacement leg without issue. Going backwards to that day though, the police did arrest her. However, not for what you might think though, dumping in that river was a felony and that was the reason she was arrested. Sadly, since that incident did not directly involve me, I have no idea what came of that and if she got a fine or something more serious. I can only hope that the fish in the river will enjoy their very expensive human limp and can find a use for it. All joking aside, I was mad at what Karen did and assuming that since she could not see a disability the way she thinks it is, then it must not exist. Disability comes in all shapes and sizes. Some are visible and some are not. The most important message I want to tell people though is that not all prosthetics look the same and please don't throw them in rivers because they are very expensive. You might also end up in jail because of it, so if you're a Karen reading this, just don't do it. Who am I kidding? Obviously, no Karen would read this or learn from it, so instead just enjoy the entertainment value. And yeah guys, this Karen probably takes the prize for one of the dumbest people we have ever seen in a Reddit story. Either way, if you have enjoyed this story, then I would really appreciate it if you could post some star emojis in the comments and maybe even like the video. Thank you very much and now let's continue. And the next one is a story from r slash petty revenge. I should explain that I'm not better for not usually taking petty revenge. I'm just lazy, if I was reborn as an animal, I would be a sloth. Yet if I need to be petty, I am petty. To preface this, I would start this out to say that my current husband and I have been besties since we were 14. We married other people, had families and generally lived our lives. My first husband died, they, first and second, were also friends. It was a terrible time for all of us, enter his soon-to-be ex-wife. She is throwing fits about him visiting but won't visit etc, trying to say that I'm trying to steal her man, like my husband who I loved so much had not just died. Two years pass and he, current, finally leaves her. We are still just friends at this point. Eventually we start dating each other and get married fast forward to 18 months ago. My husband's daughter is up visiting during her senior year in high school. Due to Covid, she can stay for a few weeks and not worry about missing class. During this time, she lets me know that she did not get graduation announcements nor is she getting any sort of party. This is not a Covid thing either, mom was gonna piggyback off of her parents 50th wedding anniversary party. Well, I am a professional photographer that specializes in SR portraits. I take a bunch of pictures, even though mom had some done six months prior, and make up announcements. By the time the cards show up here, she has already gone home. At that point, I just call my stepdaughter SD and get the names and address for the people she wants to send these to. I also add a camping weekend invite for her grad party later in the summer at my house. I send these to everyone to include her, bio mom's parents, which is slightly petty. That led to a string of events, the first Biomom throws together a party that my husband and our son end up going to, Biomom did not like that. It also clicked in my brain what this could mean, so I then told SD about the car we were going to give her. Not a lie and a beginner beater. 
So mom goes and gets her a much newer and nicer car. Then I tell my dear SD about a cruise that I want her, my daughter and I to go on. And now mom has booked a Mediterranean cruise for the two of them. I get SD a duck and chicken. Don't ask, you all asked, it's in the update. And now mom has six chickens for when SD comes to visit. Right now I'm trying to come up with something else. I'm thinking a nice tasteful piece of jewelry. I will add that mom has some serious narcissistic traits and made SD's life miserable. We were unaware and SD is living with us and attending weekly therapy sessions. Although lazy, in this I am spiteful and willing to put forth the time and energy. And the next petty revenge story, my late mother and my dad met when she was a nurse and he was a medical student in the late 60s. They got married in 1973. I was born later that year. My mom's family always despised my dad, but not his money, because he was not Zulu and could not speak the language. My mom stayed home and raised my siblings and I. What they did not know is that my parents had an agreement that she would stay home and raise us, but was studying. She ended up being an amazing student and my dad only paid for her first year of her degree and she has scholarships the rest of her academic career all the way to her PhD. She sadly died six months before defending her thesis. When my brother started school my mother went back to work as a lecturer but also started first translating books and then writing books. By the time I was in my mid-teens she was out earning my dad 4 to 1. We went to private schools, took luxury holidays, wore nice clothes and lived in a big house and she and my dad drove a late model Mercedes or BMW every two years. And we went to university which they paid for in full. She was always sending money back to her family, paying for their education, letting them stay in her rental properties, etc. In my country there are things called funeral policies where you pay a nominal amount monthly and insure someone and when they pass away you can claim the funeral benefit to help with the funeral. A lot of these freeloaders had insured my mom and told us about it and were paying for the benefits with the money she gave them ostensibly to help pay for her funeral when she passed away. The story, my mom passed away suddenly and unexpectedly from an asthma attack on a Tuesday, 6 April at 63 and we dully informed everyone. They, my mom's family, all lived 6 to 12 hours away by car. Strike number one, they call asking for gas money to come to the funeral. Strike number two, they arrive empty handed and expect to be waited on hand and foot. They also never contributed even one red cent to her funeral. This is something that is done in my country. Strike number three, I had two small babies, my sister was in the UK and struggling to get flights out because it was just after Easter and we wanted to wait until she arrived to set the funeral date and other arrangements. The funeral was set for a Tuesday. They accused us of setting up the date so they could not attend because it was not a weekend, funerals usually held on weekends to allow family to travel and they needed to take leave. My dad reminded them that we all had to take leave, but strike number four, my aunts ransacked my mom's room, which she had shared with my dad, while we were running around making arrangements and helped themselves to her clothes, shoes and jewelry. They even stole her wedding rings. But strike number five, my uncles and cousins got drunk on the day of the funeral and got into a fight and screwed each other up and my grieving dad had to stitch these a-holes up. Strike number six, they commented on the cost of her casket and tombstone. Yes, they were pricey, but my mom liked nice things and had put away enough money to pay for it herself. At this point I was running on no sleep, grieving and trying to pay attention to my babies and so I lost it. I grabbed a handful of coins and threw it at them, screaming that they could have their contribution back. They had not made one. It was not my best moment and they also commented on why we were using catering instead of cooking at home as was custom. This was my mother's wish and she always said she wanted a caterer so all of her family could attend her funeral instead of tending to the pots. Screw them. Strike number seven, they asked for gas money to get back home. The revenge, now to claim from the funeral policy you had to produce a police certified death certificate. As they were weaseling their slimy ways out, they all, to a man, all 12 of them, aunts, uncles, cousins, asked for copies of the death certificate. They had the program ostensibly to get bereavement leave from their respective jobs. So then I gave them photocopies of the death certificate, just not certified. Haha. <laughs> they all claimed to need certified copies. 
My dad and I told them that for work they don't need certified copies, just copies and we sent them on their way. The fallout, none of these guys were ever able to claim from the policies because they could not get certified copies and they were unable to get original death certificates, simply because we never gave them copies of her ID needed to get an original certificate. F you, you greedy a-holes. I hope you got rich selling her clothes and jewelry, oh and the tap of unending money shut down hard. ETA, you cannot get a funeral policy on just anyone, you have to have a familial relationship usually, you need to provide their ID number, address etc. and after death you need to provide the aforementioned police certified death certificate and police certified deceased stamped ID to claim. You would not have access to these we hope with a random person. And the next one is the third petty revenge story and it starts like this. This happened less than an hour ago and my revenge hard on as he had to subside. It is late over 9pm and I work in the town next to where I live so I got on the highway, two lanes each way separated by a patch of dirt in the middle and I merge on the right lane and on the left about half a car in ahead of me is a white Ford pickup which is important for later. All of a sudden, the pickup starts merging onto my lane after a car behind flashed its lights to get them to get out of the fast lane. No blinker, no mirror checking, just moved like nothing was in the way. I brake and flash my lights and the idiot brake checks me, which did nothing since I was already braking because of that stupid maneuver, but still took the opportunity to take the left lane and pass because I don't like driving behind a-holes. Then went back to the right lane after because my exit is coming and that's when the idiot starts flashing blue lights on its grill behind me. For reference, flashing blue lights in my country are exclusively used by police forces so they are not allowed anywhere on civilian vehicles with fines for impersonation of authority. Currently the police pickups here are either Renaults or Toyotas so I knew this was not any kind of police vehicle. Fords have not been used in about 8 years and this pickup was brand new. Here comes the revenge part. The exit I need to take to go into my town is getting renovated, so the two lanes merge into one and at night there is a police checkpoint to enforce the 30 km per hour speed limit because part of the highway does not have asphalt on it. So then I let go of the gas to prepare to slow down and get off the highway and this moron is so fixated on my car that he doesn't notice the roadworks to the point that the two flashing lights are the only thing I see on my rear view mirror. Once we are on the single lane with those heavy orange cones he has nowhere to go so when I approached the first policeman directing traffic I was already doing about 10 km per hour, lowered my window and directed him to the flashing lights on the pickup behind me. To which he then thanked me and proceeded to direct him to a clearing in front of the police car that was parked right ahead. There is very little that annoys police here more than an idiot trying to pass as a police officer so that guy will get a ticket, lose a couple of hours and probably will be forced to rip out the lights and toss them before being allowed to continue. And yeah, ripe stars, that is obviously one of the dumbest things you can do to impersonate police. However, I'm sure some of the Karens in our stories already got experience with that and I think we have already read a few stories where Karens, especially in HOA neighborhoods, pretended to be police. But either way, I hope you enjoyed today's video, once again sorry for the cold and I hope to see you again tomorrow.